In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to retrieve potentially sensitive information from uh, unsecured Docker registries. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Chris, I'm a penetration tester and I make a lot of cybersecurity videos on this channel. Now if that's something you're interested in, subscribe uh, to the channel and ring the bell button so that you're notified of uh, all my new videos because otherwise YouTube is going to show only some of them. Okay, now for penetration testing services, for one-on-one -on -one penetration testing coaching, or if you want to consult with me for cybersecurity matters, get in touch using the links in the description. And if you want to learn how to code with Python, check out my course Python Basics in which I teach you the fundamentals of Python that will greatly help you in cybersecurity and penetration testing. Link in the description for that as well. Alright, so my uh, previous video in which I demonstrated how to extract sensitive information from uh, firmware files was well received by you fellas, which is why I decided to actually continue with a similar one. So over here I'm back on uh, the Attack Defense Labs website, which uh, is an online platform to grow your cybersecurity skills. Now watch the previous video for more details about uh, this platform or for my intake on this platform. I'll link to that video below. Now, in this video, we're going to do another challenge, which as you can see, involves uh, retrieving uh, sensitive uh, information from Docker registries. So um, this would be actually a very good practice for DevSecOps who uh, need to learn how to work with Docker from a security standpoint. So here are here is uh, the description. So we have an unprotected Docker registry which is on the same network as the um, uh, Kali machine. And uh, in this Docker we have some images. Uh, in this registry we have some images and we have the flag hidden in the name of one of these images. And our goal is to interact with the Docker registry using curl and retrieve, uh, retrieve the flag. And as you can see, it says no Docker clients are provided and uh, this exercise needs to be solved using first principles. So such as uh, using simple tools uh, so as they suggest over here using curl. So we, we're not actually using clients and we'll see about that. Okay, so um, here we uh, there's a nice feature that's been added just a few like one or two weeks ago on the attack defense uh, labs platform um, and this in this case we don't actually I wouldn't say is uh, like super extremely useful because we only have um, we have a network diagram of uh, of what happens over here with this uh, with this challenge so that we could actually better understand it. We have the target, we have ourselves as the attacker machine and we have the switch. Um, but in other more complex scenarios on the platform, this would be really useful when we have maybe multiple targets or a different way of communicating between ourselves and the targets uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so our objective is to actually get the flag from within uh, this Docker registry. So we have the lab link over here. And if I click on it, it's going to take me to a web instance. So I don't actually have to use any virtual uh, virtualizer environment as I uh, discussed in the previous video. So it says, um, we also have the instructions over here. Um, we have access to a Kali terminal instance, which is this one. And we have an interface 192xyz. So if we run IP address or ifconfig, we'll run ifconfig. In this case, we have the interfaces ETH0, ETH1, and loopback. So in this case, we're going to be focusing on the ETH1, which is 192.34.186.2. And it says that the target server should be located at 192xy3. So if we are 192.34.186.2, um, then our uh, target 
supposedly should be located at 192.34.186.2. So let's actually try to ping that machine 192.34.186.2. And as we can see, we get replies. So this might be our actual target. Now, to better determine that, um, we should uh, probably do a simple nmap scan. So nmap minus SV 192.34.186.2. And this uh, 192.34.186.2. So it's actually 3. My bad. And this should take like maybe 1 or 2 minutes to complete. Uh, as I've already done it, I remember that it actually took uh, between 1 to 2 minutes. So um, in this case, um, if our Docker is running on 186.3, we should actually see um, Nmap find the port at which this uh, registry runs. So we have it running on uh, port 5000. Honestly, I'm not uh, that good with Docker, so I had to go and look in the official documentation on how to actually interact with these uh, registries. So um, this is where uh, this is the API, so Docker registry HTTP API. As per the instructions uh, or the objective, we actually don't have Docker clients available on uh, on our Kali instance, which is why we need to act uh, or we need to be taking action using first principles. And this would be, in my understanding, using basic uh, basic tools. And since we're in the terminal over here, we could use curl. So nmap actually found Docker on port uh, 5000. And our goal would be, our first goal would be to actually, um, I don't want to overcomplicate this because this is actually really simple. So according to the documentation, uh, we first want to list uh, the repositories uh, that uh, are on, are running on that instance. So if I do control F and actually look for list, uh, listing, I guess, listing repositories, we should uh, be able to do that using the v2 catalog. So if I just do a curl HTTP 192.34.186.3 port 5000 v2 underscore catalog. This should show us uh, the so v2 underscore catalog. Okay, yeah, so I, I uh, wasn't supposed to actually add the forward slash. So we can see the repositories Alpine, Flag, and Ubuntu. Now, uh, obviously, our focus over here is the Flag one, but uh, for the sake of actually exemplification, uh, let's look into all three repositories or th all three of these repos. Doing some more uh, reading of the documentation, I found out that we can look deeper into uh, these uh, repos using the tags uh, list, so list uh, listing images tags using the uh, this tags list parameter. If we do a curl HTTP 192.34.186.3 for 5000 and we are still on v2 and we have to specify the the repo so alpine alpino alpine tag or um, tags actually list and we can see that we only have the latest tag and then if we look into the Ubuntu, so instead of Alpine, we look into the Ubuntu, we can see that we have uh, different versions of Ubuntu. And of course, if we look at our uh, flag over here, we can see that we have uh, the flag, which is under tags. Okay, so what I would actually have to do in this case is to copy the flag and then go back to attack defense, verify flag, but since I've already verified it, there is no actual input field. Unless I uh, would reset this, um, this challenge, 
so that I could actually run it one more time or run it again. Okay, so that's actually how you interact with uh, or how you can interact and retrieve potentially sensitive information from uh, Docker registries. Uh, now, even though this exercise, as you uh, have seen, was extremely basic, this actually, um, as I've told you, made me look into the official Docker documentation and learn how to actually interact with, uh, with it. And this is a simple real-world scenario of an unsecured Docker registry. Now, I've provided links in the description for those interested in how to actually mitigate or avoid the, this type of a scenario uh, and how to secure Docker uh, registries. So you would be finding uh, these links in the description of this video. Now, question, have you ever been in the situation of pen testing Docker? Comment down below uh, and let me know. Now, before I let you go, I would really appreciate if you shared this video with your uh, cybersecurity fellas on social media so that we can grow this channel uh, together. Please also don't forget to look in the description uh, of this video for a discount on uh, my Python basics course for pen testing services and for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Until next time, thank you for watching.